Remember that your gray hair feeds or feeds on your black hair. Right now, the values, the etiquettes, what you exercise now is the fabric in which the destiny of your children will be attached. A right is a right, even if no one is doing it. And a wrong is a wrong, even if everybody is doing it. For you who are doing things the right way, you'll have something to pass on to the next generation. Yes, welcome to the Wisdom Talk, I'm Joe Wisdom. And uh, behold another day that the Lord has made. We are all grateful. We are grateful to God. Father, we thank you for allowing us uh, to speak to the people by your divine grace that you have inputted in us. We are so honored that we are coming to you as Wisdom Talks. Uh, we want to revisit of what we did the last episode. And we are talking about wisdom for parenting. And we say that in parenting, parenting is a divine responsibility. Every parent should know that parenting is a divine responsibility. It is God who have entrusted us with the parenting responsibility. God knew that we are well able. God doesn't see you as a weak parent. God knows that you have what it takes. If he knew you were weak, he could not have allowed you to conceive in the first place. He could not have allowed you to be fruitful in the first place. So you are fruitful and you are productive because God has given you that ability. And the Bible says that God has brought us together as parents to bring a godly offspring for him. So bringing up children is a kingdom assignment, is a kingdom responsibility, is a divine responsibility. So as a parent, feel like you have what it takes. And in, when you feel inadequate, when you feel like you don't have what it takes, go back to God. Ask for grace. Ask for wisdom. Ask for understanding and knowledge. When your children begin telling you that you cannot understand them, just know that it is age. It is their level. They feel that you are not understanding them. How comes that you don't understand them at that age? And when they advance in years, and they begin to, 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 to get children. When your daughter, you know, your daughter in high school is not understanding, you are not understanding her, will accuse you that, mom, you don't understand me, nobody loves me in this house, you know. Uh -huh. But when they become parents, wakatu wameanza kupata watoto, the same mother who never used to understand, the same mother who used to be outdated becomes a consultant. They now begin calling the mother, Mom, mutoto wana behave hivi tu ufanya nini? Uh -huh. So it's a matter of age. It's a matter of age. So understand them from where they are coming from. I usually tell young people when I speak to them, where you are, we were. Before you got there, we were there. Sometimes I see my, my son behave in a particular and I tell him, come here. You see what you are doing right now? I did that some many years ago. Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived under the sun, said that there is nothing new under the sun. For what is, has been. So as parents, let's all understand that we have a divine assignment from God to raise a godly offspring for God. Let us carry out our responsibility with faithfulness and I know that the Lord God will reward us greatly. Now today I want to talk about, uh, now, now that we talked about wisdom for parenting, what does now this child need to know? I want to talk about the wisdom, the wisdom for your sons and daughters. What every son, what every daughter should understand. What our daughters and our sons should understand. That's what I want to talk about. Wisdom for our sons and daughters. Wisdom for progress. Number one, number one. I want every son, every daughter to know that you cannot command two generations. You cannot command two generations. You cannot command your parents and command your children. I know you are watching right there. And if you are a parent, you are watching on behalf of your son. It's good for them to understand. 
You cannot command two generations. No one can. You cannot command your parents and command your children. Some of those people who were very naughty in school, some of those people who, who, who never used to heed to the instruction of their parents, were haunted by their children when they began raising up their children. Sometimes you see your son behave in a way. And before you punish them, you remember, I also did this to my, to my father or to my mother. Because what comes around, what goes around comes around. Life is an echo. It gives you back what you have given to it. And that is why you find someone like, uh, someone like David, you know, when you look at some of the things that happened to him, there are some of the things that he did. I'm sure David used to get advice from the father not to, get, to, not to involve himself in immorality and all that. But you see David as a king, he went and slept around with another woman's husband and killed, actually he killed Uriah. How did that now haunt him in the days to come? His children never took his advice seriously. So now his son, unfortunately, by the name of Absalom, took his father's wives and slept with them. So you are saying that you cannot therefore command two generations. You see someone like David? David is a good example. David could not heed to the instruction of the father. Every parent would advise the child to be very careful on how he treats other people. In this episode, I want to look at how David killed Uriah. There's no any single parent who advises his children to go killing others or taking other people's wives. So David took Bathsheba, slept with her, and killed the husband Uriah. Later on, we see David's son Absalom getting into his, uh, into, uh, uh, his son Absalom getting his father's wife and sleeping with them in front of all the Israel. Actually, he slept with them in the balcony, in, in, the, in the rooftop of, of the palace. Because what goes around comes around. Have you, can you also remember Jacob who lied to his father? Jacob lied to his father to receive the blessing instead of Esau. What happened to him? He was also lied to by his sons when they came with the coat of many colors full of blood. And they said, this is the coat of, our, of your son, Joseph, and he has been killed by wild animals. They lied to his father because the father lied to his father. So you cannot command two generations. So you cannot command two generations. You cannot command your father and command your children. And we have seen how Jacob lied to his father. He lied to his father to receive the blessing instead of Esau. Later on, the same sons, his sons, came and lied to him that Joseph was dead. Yet they had sold him to the Ishmaelites. What I'm saying is, be careful as a son, as a daughter, what you do to your parents. Because what goes around, comes around. Life is an echo, it gives back what you have given to it. There are some things that are happening to parents right now, and when they look at it, they can trace. They can trace some traces. They can see some traces of what they did when they were growing up. So I would kindly ask for us, even us, because we still have parents, the way we do, the way we carry out ourselves out there, when we become parents, you begin to honor those who parented you. Parents are powerful. It's good to honor them. Actually, the Bible says that honor your father and mother for two blessings. Number one, for you to live long in this life, and that it shall be well with you. So when you honor them, number one, there is a blessing of long life. Number two, it shall be well. It shall go well with you on the surface of the earth. 
To so many people, it is not well with them. Why? Dishonor. Dishonor to the parents. Even the way you respond to them. Sometimes you see your parents calling you, and all that you respond is, angalia hao tu ni na nisumbua. Unataka wasubue nani? I know to some parents, some, sometimes we push too hard. But even if you don't have to agree with them, you must di- disagree in honor. You must disagree in honor. You must not show contempt. You shall not be, you, you must not be rude to them. Very important. You cannot command two generations. There is a man, I want to give this example, and it was is a story that I've shared of a man uh, who was studying in the University of Nairobi. And it is said that when they, uh, when they went out there, they, had a, they, 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 were, they, they were they were demonstrating on something. And they had this tabia of burning other people's vehicles. So the man went out there and burnt another man's car when he was in the university. Many years later, the same place, he was driving along the university. And at some point, there was unrest in, in, the, in the university. And he had to leave the car because the boys and the girls there were stoning. The students were stoning cars. So he had to leave the car and run for his life. To his amaze, uh, to, 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 you know, to his surprise, the same place that he touched someone's car, his car was touched the same spot. And he remembered, when I was in the university, I touched another man's car. It was payback time. So let us be very careful on how we treat others, even as we grow up, as we mature in life. Every child should know that what you are doing right now, you are sowing a seed. You may not see the fruits right now, but in the days to come, Life sometimes is so unforgiving that life keep revisiting your past experiences and deeds. So be careful that you don't mishandle those who have gone ahead of you. Be careful to obey and to honor those who have gone ahead of you. As a young man, as a young woman, you need to know that a right is a right even if no one is doing it. A right is a right, even if no one is doing it. And a wrong is a wrong, even if everybody is doing it. There are places you find yourself and you feel like everyone is doing it. You are in school, you are in high school, you are in college, you are in the university. And you feel everybody is doing it. On weekends, we have to go and, and drink. Why? Everybody, everyone in my room is doing it. A wrong is a wrong, even if everybody is doing it. And a right is a right. Why can't you be that person who remains in your, in, your, in your room, doing your studies? The fact that everyone has a boyfriend or a girlfriend doesn't give you a license to do it. If you don't see the need of it, then why engage in it? Be careful on the choices that you make. Be careful. Don't judge a right through public opinion. When you begin to think a right, a wrong is a right because everybody is doing it, you go wrong. And when you think, you, when you begin to think that a right is, a wrong is a right through public opinion, you go wrong. Don't walk away out of your convictions. Men and women of purpose, men and women of destiny, don't do things out of convenience. They do things out of conviction. You don't do things because everyone is doing it. Because it is convenient with you. Because parents are away from you. You do things that you know will help you become a better person in the days to come. The other one is that you must be very truthful in your dealings. Be very truthful in your dealings. As a son, as a daughter, be truthful. There are some people who even lie to their parents about school fees. I remember when we were growing up. You know, there are, there are those guys. Kwanza wale watu wakulelewa na shosho. Nyinyi wale, nyinyi watu. Those people were brought up by their grandmothers. May, God, may, 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 may the Lord remember you. 
at you could go to your grandmother and tell your grandmother that you need 100 shillings ukiulizwa ni nini unasema ni ya photosynthesis god will never forgive you <laughs> you go asking your grandmother money and when she ask of uh, how unasema ni photosynthesis just because your grandmother cannot understand what for the photosynthesis is and she gives you the money let me tell you that payback time is coming your son will tell you something and he will not take a hundred, he will take ten thousand. <laughs> so those who are growing, avoid those mistakes. Be truthful in what you do. Be truthful. Be a truthful. Truth is a virtue. Begin to exercise those virtues because you cannot give what you don't have. How can your children inherit something that you didn't pass over to them? Remember that your gray hair feeds or feeds on your black hair. Right now, the values, the etiquettes, what you exercise now is the fabric in which the destiny of your children will be attached. Be very careful on what you do today. Now, in conclusion, in conclusion, as a son, know that you have a responsibility to give your parents an easy time. Don't give them a difficult time. Why should you be the discussion in the family meetings? Why should you be the discussion in the staff room? Why should you be the discussion in, in the, you know, you, you keep being summoned by the disciplinary committees of every institution you go. In that company that you are working, why should you be the only one writing letters, apologies. You can correct what is wrong. And begin to walk the right path. It is possible. For you who are doing things the right way, you'll have something to pass on to the next generation. I'm Joe Wisdom, and that is Wisdom Talks.